Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today I got 13 hacks that all of us fishermen have in common. So pay attention. Sinker hack number one. I ain't got no river near my house to go get rocks from and I don't want to drive real far. So I bought me some rocks, which is probably not the most efficient way to do this. But you can use rocks for sinkers. And it don't have to be river rocks. As long as you got some rocks, you can use them. Okay, so I picked out some of the cooler, smaller rocks at that bag. Look at this one. It's a freaking round rock. Is that not awesome? Make a cannonball sinker. Honestly, all of these would work for a sinker. But now we're gonna pick one of these rocks and you're gonna need a masonry bit. And we're just gonna drill a hole in it. Honestly, after giving this a try, I think if I were to do it again, I'd probably get a drill bit from the tile section at the hardware like Lowe's because ceramic tile is really hard and this is a masonry bit and this right here ain't concrete. It's harder than concrete. If you take you some of this stainless steel wire and you just make you a loop out of it, I mean like a basic loop, then you throw you a swivel on it. I'm using some of these big barrel swivels. They got the end that opens and closes so you can attach it and stuff. When you throw it on your loop, if you take a hook like this and you put it in a drill, you can put your loop on the hook and run your drill, but you gotta hold your two ends with a pair of pliers. When you're done, just trim it off and you'll have a little loop like this that you can epoxy into your rock. That is if you can get that hole drilled. Now I'm gonna use some of this JB Weld that comes in like a putty form. You need it and it hardens when you put it on whatever you're gonna put it on. But honestly, you could use any kind of epoxy that you want to and it would work. And when you're finished, you got yourself a rock sinker. You know that's pretty cool right there. That's awesome. Actually, I just got through with this thing and it's already hardened up. Is that not pretty cool? Sinker hack number two. I got a piece of rebar. It's just a regular old piece of rebar and it's kind of long too. And the first thing I need to do is cut me off a piece. And to do it, you can use an angle grinder. You can use a saw like my big saw. Just figure out a way to cut it. Okay, so I got my piece of rebar cut and I could just wrap a wire around the top of this thing. And a lot of people do that and their weights turn out awesome. But I'm gonna drill a hole in the top and I'm gonna attach it just like I did the rock. Now, personally, I think I'd rather do the rebar weight than the rock weight. The rock weight's awesome, but this rebar drills out a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster. Next, we're gonna go back to our stainless steel wire. We're gonna loop it over. We're gonna use our little hook on our drill trick, and we're gonna make another loop. Don't forget to put your swivel on it first, though. Okay, after I twist it all the way up, I cut it off, and I untwist the ends just a little bit, so the epoxy will have something to grab when it's in there. Now, next, I'm gonna mix up some more JB Weld, but this time I'm gonna use glue because I like never got that off my fingers. All right, so we got a rebar weight made and it turned out freaking awesome. And I really like it. The only problem with this weight is it's gonna rust because it's steel. So now we're gonna take our weight and we're gonna plastic dip it to keep it from rusting. My plastic dip's kind of thick because it's cold as crap down here. Then all you gotta do is hang it on something and let the plastic dip run off. Make sure you put something under to catch it because this stuff drips. Man, this turned out really nice. Looks good. This awesome. Sinker hack number three. Now another good alternative sinker would be a stainless steel bolt. You know, stainless steel so it don't rust. But you can take you a stainless steel bolt like this, take you some stainless steel wire, and wrap it around the head of this bolt to get your loop. Now the cool thing about using a bolt, this bolt by itself weighs 0.75. So this bolt weighs three quarters of an ounce. If I want this bolt heavier, all I gotta do is put a nut on it. Now it weighs 0.95 almost an ounce. I can put another nut on it. Now I got the bolt with two nuts on it and it weighs 1.15 ounces. Add another nut to it, which is three, and now it weighs 0.14. Fill her on up 
Now it weighs 0.165. That's kind of cool that you can change the weight of your sinker by adding nuts. I kind of really like that idea. These right here are called eye loophole bolts. And they're kind of cool because they already got a hole on the end and you can do the same thing. They're stainless steel and you can add nuts to them to change the weight. And if you ran across some of these, it would just make things a lot simpler. You wouldn't have to twist a wire on the end. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Number four. Now another good way to make a fishing sinker is to use spark plugs. Using spark plugs for fishing sinkers might sound ridiculous to some people, but this idea has been used for years by bank fishermen. It's not nothing new, and it's not as crazy as you would think. Tons of people do this, and what they usually do is they put a swivel on this little hook, and as you can see, this is not a used spark plug. Most people use used spark plugs. This is going in my truck, people. I am not tearing up the spark plug. <laughs> but like I said, you can put the swivel on this end, or you can wrap wire around this side and make a loop and use it that way. Now, the main downside to using spark plugs that I see is most people only change their spark plugs about every two years or every 50,000 miles. So, eventually, you're going to run out of spark plugs. You might want to know a mechanic at a garage so you can get an endless supply of material. You know what I'm saying? And you know one of the coolest things I've seen people do with spark plugs is they put wire around this end bring it out like spots they actually make a spider claw which is great for surf fishing i might have to try that the next time i go to the beach i'm just saying sicker hack number five now something else you could use for dragon weight is a landscape nail these landscape nails are like 12 inches long and they're made to nail together landscape timbers you could take some stainless steel wire like they sell at Harbor Freight, which is not really priced too bad. You could wrap it around the end of this head, and you could drag it like that. But I made a video several years ago where I took a landscape nail, I cut the head off of it, ground down the sides, and made it where you could put a swivel on it. And it actually turned out pretty cool. Anything you ground on galvanized like this, you might want to paint it though when you're finished. Because this galvanized like this won't rust, but when you grind the galvanized off of it, it will rust. This thing's six ounces. So technically, we could make two dragon weights out of this and be all right in most bodies of water. And the last time I checked, Landscape nails are like a dollar a piece, but everything's going up, so I can't guarantee that price. I'm just saying. Cigarette hack number, number six. Get you some clear vinyl tubing and make sure it's three eighths inch inside diameter. And then get you some kind of adhesive. It don't matter, I don't care if it's super glue, don't matter what it is. Any kind of marine sealant's gonna work pretty good. Get you some wire twists and you want the orange kind if you're using the 3 8 inch diameter. And then get you some screw eyes. Now one last thing, on these little orange wire nuts, make sure that you don't get the kind with the little tabs on the side because this ain't gonna work. You want the one with the smooth sides. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take one of these wire nuts, put some glue on it and stick it in the end of your tube. Cut your tube the length that you want it. 12 inches is a pretty good length for this hack. Then you're gonna fill it up with either BBs or lead, and you're gonna glue another wire twist into the other end. After you get that end glued in, screw in your screw eye into the little spring inside your nut, and it'll hold it great. A lot of times I'll put glue on my screw eye too just to make sure it's going to hold better. And when you're finished, you got yourself a dragon weight. Now as you can see, I made the BB one just a little bit longer. And it's got more BBs in it than this lead one does. These are just extra split shots I had laying around. So I made one out of lead, made one out of BBs just for an example. And the BB one... If I can get it on here, it's 3.15 ounce. The lead one is 3.4 ounces, and it's smaller and got less lead in it. That's because lead's heavier. But still, if you want to make one cheaper, you can use BBs, and it's not a bad idea. Hack number seven. You probably know what this is. This is a drinking straw, okay? Well, you can take this drinking straw. You can take you some BBs. You're going to need you a pair of pliers 
and you're gonna need you some kind of lighter. You heat up the end of your drinking straw and then you take your BBs and you pour you some BBs down into it. Then you heat up the other end and you use a pair of pliers to crimp it shut. Make sure you got it closed good. Then I like to take a little finishing nail or a needle or something and stick it through the end. And that's about as cheap as it gets, people. That's about as cheap as it gets. Oh, by the way, you can also do the same thing and don't put no BBs in it. Just leave air in it. And then you got yourself a float for fishing. I'm just saying. Sinker hack number eight. I've also made a lot of dragon weight videos. And my favorite dragon weight was always paracore with buckshot in it. And you just take the paracore, pull out the center, you stuff it full of buckshot, and you heat the ends. And it makes a great dragon weight. The only problem with these are they take time to make. So you better do it while you're watching your favorite TV show or something. Don't wait till two hours before you go fishing and try to make some of these because it ain't going to happen. You could even use some little tiny split shots like these if you don't want to use buckshot. I'm just saying. Cigarette number nine. And then I made my own drift sticks. And they turned out awesome. They really were similar to drift sticks. And they worked just the same. The reason I made drift sticks is because this was one of the first weights on the market that actually worked good. Like I said, I got a video about these if you want to go over and check it out. These are not that hard to make and they actually are kind of fast. They're a lot faster than the Paracore anyway. Sinker hack number 10. Nowadays, if I'm trolling, my go-to weight is the solid core lead weight. It's just made from quarter inch solid core lead. I bought this roll on Amazon a long time ago, and it's five pounds of weight right here. If you're wondering what five pounds of weight will do, it'll basically make 40 of these dragon weights right here. And it's really simple to use. All you do is roll you some off the roll. Me personally, I like to use heat shrink too because after I stick it in it, I can just drop my swivel in there, shrink her up, and it'll hold on to it really, really good. But there's even easier ways you can do it. You can pound out the end, put your hole through it, and put your swivel on it, and you're good to go. And actually, I'm not the genius that come up with this. They've been using this in steelhead fishing for years and years. The only difference is they cut their weights a little bit smaller than we do. But when I make them, it's called a dragon weight because I'm using them to drag or to drift so my weight don't get hung up. If I'm not mistaken, steelhead fishermen call them slinky weights. I could be wrong about that. Now, if you need some of these and you don't want to make them, which I don't know why you wouldn't make them, they're pretty simple. There's a company called Dirty South Dragon Weights and they make the exact same version of this. Pretty sure Nate sells these over at Tackle Bandit. That's the guy I had on the video from last spring. How's it going everybody? This is Nate with Tackle Bandit. That was awesome. But like I said, if you don't want to make your own, go over there and just buy you some. Sinker rack! Number 11. Pouring your own sinkers can be really cost effective if you get your lead at the scrap yard. And if you live in one of the states that you can't use lead, I made a video about using bismuth and using tin and using different types of stuff and you can still pour sinkers with it. I also have several videos of sinker molds I've made. This was a no roll sinker that I made a year or two ago. With this one all you gotta really have is a drill and something to cut your aluminum with and there you go. Number 12. And not too long ago, I made an egg sinker mold, which actually made some decent sinkers. They don't look that bad. For this video here, all you need is a drill. Preferably a drill press makes things easier. Sinker egg, 13. And then a couple of years ago, I used a step bit to make some pyramid weights. If you don't know what a step bit is, that's a step bit. And you can get them at Harbor Freight Lowe's, pretty much anywhere. But you just take the step bit, drill out a piece of wood or a piece of aluminum, and then you put your little hook in it and you pull your sinkers. And when you're done, you got yourself a pyramid sinker. And that was a pretty simple video. Everybody seemed to like it. Hey guys, if it's the first time you ever seen one of my videos, then you need to go over and check out my channel page. Click subscribe, people. What you waiting on? What you waiting on? And if you like DIYs, then you're in the right place. I'm just saying. Well, there you have it. 13 sinker hacks that are freaking awesome. Just like I promised. And as always, I appreciate you watching. And I'll see you on the next build.